Good morning, everybody. Hi, Marianne. Hi, Kirsty, and hi, Christine. Welcome to Darlington. And uh, I, once again, I've joined early just to make sure that everything's working. And also, just in case I had to, you know, restart, <laughs> switch out, switch back in, all those sorts of things I've had been having to deal with lately. So we've got a successful tour again, which is fantastic. Good morning, Ava. Good morning, Kimberly. How are you all this morning? So I'm going to slowly just walk along the streets that lead to Sydney University campus. And at the moment, we are located in a, a little laneway called Shepherd Lane in the locality of Darlington, which is quite close to Redfern Station, just outside of the city of Sydney. So here we go. Once upon a time, this, this area would have been a really low rent area, a very uh, working class or even unemployed. There was an area that was uh, quite slum-like and now it's been totally gentrified and properties in this area now cost a lot of money to either rent or buy. Although we are quite close to the university and there is, of course, some student accommodation around this area as well. Hi Lisa, hi Inna, hi Debbie and hi to Shelley. Good morning everybody. So we'll slowly make our way along this laneway uh, which has been turned into a lovely pedestrian uh, lane and the local residents have really taken ownership of this area and you'll notice that there's little sort of personal touches all the way along which is actually quite lovely. Hi Beth, good morning to you. How are you this morning? lovely to have a guide on board. So here we can see that we've had little personal touches have been added all the way along the laneway, um, making it look quite beautiful. Hi Jill, hi Sandra, hi Anna. Just walking along Shepherd Lane. So yes, as I said, this, this laneway once upon a time probably would have been um, not the place to hang out in. I remember 30, probably 40 years ago, every time I drove through Redfern area, I would drive through with my doors locked because it was considered a very dangerous area. Now it's the exact opposite. I love the little touch on this building here. Um, instead of having, you know, what you typically see across the top of walls, those broken glass shards as deterrents to people coming over the wall, they've used cactuses. <laughs> So it looks quite lovely, even though it is actually a physical deterrent as well. I think that's a great touch. Hi, Sandra from Toronto. Welcome. Hi, Diane. Hi, JV. Hi, Yuna. And hi, Gregory. Some familiar faces and some faces I'm not sure I recognise. So welcome one and all. I think this makes it quite a lovely postcard as well. And then we're standing under a quite a big bougainvillea plant. It's taking over this wall. We've even got old oil cans and washing machine tubs <laughs> being utilised to uh, pretty up the space. I missed the one with the bike out the front, mainly because they had some chucked out furniture. That's okay. We'll get that next time. All right, so that's Shepherd Lane in Darlington. Look at this. <laughs> you can make anything look beautiful if you've got an imagination, can't you? Exactly, Beth, absolutely. Yep, all you need is a little bit of imagination. You can make anything look wonderful. Hi Annie, hi Beatrice, and welcome Trisha. There we go. I'm not sure what that says. I have terrible trouble trying to decipher some of the street art. I um, I don't know what that says. Oh, no, I'm not even going to have a guess. And then look at this. We've got <laughs> we have an attempt at a plant trying to survive. It's got it's carrying its own watering can. I'm I'm not sure if it's winning. 
Okay, let's cross the road and we'll start to head towards, start to head towards Sydney Uni. It's a grey old day today. It has been raining this morning and we're expecting the wind to pick up. I'm just keeping an eye on the time. 40 seconds till kickoff. Hi, Laura. And some of the laneways, as I said a little earlier, some of the laneways that you just wouldn't dare venture down um, decades ago, now they're actually quite lovely spaces. Hi, Shannon. Hi, DT. I'm not sure I'd be very happy if I had this backyard, though, with this enormous gum tree. I think it has the potential to <laughs> cause some damage. <laughs> gum trees are renowned for dropping limbs. Eclectic, yes, Ava, that's definitely, that's definitely a word I would use. I'm just trying to decide which is the best way for me to go. I might go this way. Yeah, this looks good. I had my uh, navigator with me last time, uh, but he's decided not to come with me today. <laughs> we, we, we need to start preparing um, and getting ready to, to move. So, uh, so he stayed behind today. I've just noticed the time has ticked over. So welcome everybody. Good morning, my name's Lynn, and um, we're meeting today in the, the locality that sort of encompasses Camperdown, Darlington and Redfern, heading towards the beautiful buildings of the Sydney University. Before I begin, what I'd like to do is acknowledge that we are meeting today on the traditional lands of the Cadigal people and pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. All right, so with that, let's turn this camera around and uh, welcome mum and dad. Hi, Diane. Oh, Tricia, what's happened? I missed something. Oh, here we go. Sitting in the corner, I'll try not to cough. Oh no, Tricia. Yeah, hope you feel better soon. I've been wondering uh, why you hadn't done a, a tour lately. And yeah, that explains it. Feel better soon. And uh, you have a good excuse to be banished to the corner. <laughs> but that's okay, we'll take care of you. All right, so we're walking along. Oh, I can't even remember what the name of this street is. Not that it matters terribly much. We'll um, just take in some of the sights as we walk along. If someone's decided to pretty up their garage door. Don't want any computer virus off you. <laughs> well played, Gregory. There's some of these lovely old terrace houses have received a lot of love lately. This one's quite gorgeous. And these were typical of this area from around about the late 1800s, early 1900s. And then some of the new designs try to emulate, try to emulate the, um, the traditional architecture of the area. Personally, I'd rather see some colour in there as well, but there you go. We've got this sort of two up, two down terrace style in a more modern building. Okay, so up ahead we start to see that we're approaching uh, the outskirts of the University of Sydney, which was established in 1850. It's the oldest university in Australia and it's most prestigious. Now I'm wondering, I haven't been this way before. What's gonna happen if I go this way? Am I gonna end up where I want to be? Let's take a chance, shall we? Hi Stephanie, me too what Anna? Not COVID I hope. Hi Anne, hi Faye. Okay, so uh, yay, an adventure. Absolutely, Beth. Absolutely, I normally would have come round from uh, just a little over to my right. So I'm just trying to orientate myself a little and 
figure out where exactly I am. I think I have it now. <laughs> oh, more colour in the... Ah, yes, yes. Excellent. Ah, yes. I kind of know where I am now. I would have normally last time I went along alongside that building over there. So we're coming out in the same place. It's all good. It's all good. And all we're missing is the later buildings that were added later in sort of like the 1970s, 1980s, that type of era when the university expanded its grounds and, uh, and added to its uh, faculty buildings. For instance, we're at the back of the chemical engineering building here, which probably would have come under science in earlier days. Hi, Santosh. Santosh, are you our guide in Nepal? Hi, Camillo. Okay, so life is start starting to gradually return to the university and uh, we're still on summer vacation. Um, we're kind of going through the uh, the period of orientation and I think enrolments are all being completed. Uh, this building on our left here is the Sydney University Sports um, complex, sports facility, and inside there there's the uh, swimming centre. And my granddaughter did a, a jiu-jitsu tournament in that building a couple of months ago and won a gold medal. She's eight. All right, so what we missed by coming in this direction was walking straight past the old Darlington School, which I'll just quickly show you because it's beautiful. It was built in 1878 and operated as a school until 1975, um, which was when the university expanded its grounds. And now it actually is part of the university and it's used as a performance space. Thanks, Stephanie. Yeah, thanks, Trisha. It was pretty cool. Hi, Shannon. Hi, Miriam. Yeah, pretty proud parents and grandparents and great-grandparents. Hi, Terry. So this, is, this area is actually called the Cadigal Green, um, which is dedicated to the uh, traditional owners of the, the surrounding land. And look at these wonderful um, seats here where the students can just lie back and um, enjoy the space and relax. Hi Hope, hi Bear, Barry, um, but I'll just give you an opportunity. I'm just trying to find a way to get down. <laughs> it's a big step, big step through down from here. So I'm just trying to find a way to get down onto the lower path. It's obviously, oh wait on, I might've found one. Might've found a route. Here we go. That looks promising. I'm not really stepping on the garden. <laughs> So yes, this gorgeous building is now a, um, a music and performance space and was once um, a school. We just get quickly around the other side and then this is only a little short detour. It has a steeple. This school has a steeple. Let me show you. There we go. Look at that. It's quite pretty, isn't it? Apparently it was built in, I'm no architecture student, Apparently it was built in the uh, neo-Gothic style with polychromatic bricks. And I'm guessing that means more than one color. There we go, it's quite a lovely little school building. Hi Rhonda, isn't that beautiful? And it has a slate roof. There you go. It was um, refurbished in 2014. Lovely little school building, uh, 1878, Sandra. So there we go, public school, oh, it says 1877, but everything that I read said 1878. So there we go, that, that plaque up there makes a liar of me. <laughs> I wonder if we can go in there. Let's see if it's open. No still has its old hooks where the kids would hang their bags and um, jackets. 
No, it's not open. All right, let's move on. Sorry, I'm moving a bit quickly there. Apologies for that. So back to back to the green. Thanks for the follow, Beth. And I'll try and get onto your tours as well. The difficulty for me is that a lot of the American tours happen at times that I'm asleep, <laughs> but I'll do my best. I uh, managed to get on to uh, uh, Lari in uh, Memphis onto one of her tours the other day, which was lovely. She was uh, she was dealing with rain and wind and umbrellas that day as well. So uh, <laughs> we all have to go through that, don't we? All right. So we just need to make one turn, walk up the street a little. Oh, excellent. And Lurie's, and we both have something in common. We're both twin mums. Okay, so there's a couple of little plaques along here that just acknowledge. They're difficult to see, so I'm not going to dwell on them. They just acknowledge um, uh, the fact that we are on Cadigal land of the Aora Nation. Um, what does this one say? Uh, it talks about the connection to this land and it's a, an interesting plaque. Okay, someone's left a DVD behind. <laughs> it's, I'm at that stage today where I've got, I've got to prepare for rain, wearing a rain jacket. It's also humid, so I'm sweltering in this rain jacket. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> they're wonderful benches, Sandra, and I've read reviews. I've read Google reviews that the benches are very comfortable. <laughs> so if ever you happen to come to Sydney Uni grounds, need somewhere to have a rest, they've been recommended. Uh, so that looks like an interesting bike. Set up for a child on the back. Here's the uh, sports centre. And the aquatic centre, that's all in there. And now across the road we get to see some more of these old terrace houses. Hi Kamuji. All right, so this is May's Crescent and up at the lights up there is where we'll cross the road and into the university proper. So how's everyone's days going? I know for some of you it's morning, for some of you it's afternoon. I think Beth already said that she's uh, just getting ready for dinner cold. Have you got snow there in Dublin, you know? I imagine you probably don't in the city itself. Not today, okay, that's good. It's evening here in Toronto. It's warm, excellent, rainy. Okay, so we've got some squawky noise, noisy birds happening. On my right, I think they might be rainbow lorikeets. Let's see if I can see it. Oh, somewhere in that massive tree. Yeah, I can't see them. Somewhere in there. All right, I am going to go against the light because it's with us for the traffic. Minus four where I am. That's a little bit cold for me. And Stephanie, it's warm in Texas. Andrew, you shoveled your driveway. Uh, that is one thing, what's one activity I never want to have to do. And you're expecting snow, JV. Hi, Carl. Dinner time in New England. 
just had a spate of uh, messages fly up in the chat. So let me catch up. Cold in British Columbia uh, and just frosty where Gregory is. All right, so here we go. So this now on this very noisy road. <laughs> this is the main grounds of the university proper. And the first building we come to is, is basically just an admin block. So we'll just um, scoot past it. And on the right over here, we have a lot of um, sort of libraries. This one over here is called the Wentworth Building. Oh, here we go, we've got the lights. And the buildings that we're most interested in are just up ahead. Hi, Joanna. Hi, Leslie. I just wanted to mention too, most of you are probably already familiar with the fact that <laughs> I, I do like my uh, plants and I, I do like looking at them and I don't know the names of all of them and I still would like to look at them occasionally even if I don't know the names of all of them and the only reason I'm mentioning this is because I had a review that said if you don't know the name of the plant why well, point it out so sorry guys if anyone uh, feels that way but I'm always going to stop and look at the flowers and uh, and I hope you appreciate that I will continue to do so. <laughs> I was a little bit miffed when I saw that. Anyway, never mind. Life's too short, eh? All right, so this is the Madsen Building. And uh, to the best of my research, this one was built in, uh, I think it was around about 1880. I'm bound to see a plaque on it that corrects me one way or the other. Yeah, Sandra, I sort of felt the same way. I just thought I'd mention it and then we'll move on. So this is the, um, the School of Geoscience and the National Testing Laboratory is also based here. It's a rather lovely, beautiful building and that looks like we can't go inside. So I'm going to do a vertical shot on the tower first of all. So one, two, three, here we go. Beautiful, lovely building with lovely glasswork. And Sydney University is known as one of the six sandstone universities, mainly referring to the, the era and the construction materials, but also the fact that they are all prestigious universities. Let me catch up with who's joined. Oh, Andrea, thank you. This botanist appreciates it. And if you know the name of a plant that I happen to point out and I don't, more than happy for you to jump in and tell me you love the greenery some just have to mind about yeah never mind karen rose paula and mary welcome and yes i i don't don't profess to be an expert on everything i certainly don't try to be and i welcome the input of all my voyages if they can fill my knowledge gaps okay let's have a little look in here i'm not sure what to happening this week at the university. We'll have a little look and see the entrance to the beautiful Madsen building. Um, we have a very, very, what would you call it, almost Middle Ages type light fitting up there. There we go. And this tells you what this school is all about. So we've got geology, geophysics, environmental science, geography, marine science, coastal studies. Absolutely, Annie, that's exactly my thought. And over here, we've got the sandstone above the doorway and that beautiful glass window up there. It's having trouble focusing for it because of the light. Anyway, I'm not sure how far we can go into this building. So we've got the Centre for Classical and Near Eastern Studies up there. 
I think we won't dwell too long in this building. We'll keep moving. The red floors, yeah. It's an unusual colour to choose, isn't it? It's um, and it's I think it's linoleum. Trisha, your your geography, that's your field. Perfect. All right, so that was just a little introduction to that building, and uh, the the more impressive ones are yet to come. Shannon, I live in the city. Most of the Great Hall was filmed in. It's very expensive to go on the tour, though. Well, the funny thing is, Shannon, that uh, there was a Chinese tour operator um, who was bringing <laughs> bringing his uh, customers to Sydney University and telling them that it was the film location for Harry Potter. Spoiler alert. Not one single uh, sh shot or scene from any of the Harry Potter movies was ever filmed in uh, Sydney or I think anywhere in Australia. This is really interesting. It's like a bike toolkit. Uh, has anyone seen any of these before? Look, you've got a screwdriver. You've got a, uh, a Phillips head. I'm not sure what this thing does. But, yeah, it's like a – here, look, we've got – on this really long one here, we've got a spanner and this one here, I don't know what it does. And then you've got even, oh, look at this, look at this, oh, hang on. You've got an air pressure gauge and uh, and a thing, a thing for connecting to your, your tire. How cool is that? Because, of course, lots of people around here would have bikes, I imagine. And uh, sadly, there's one without wheels. Why do people do that? You have those in your parks as well. You know, it's a fantastic idea. I bet you it's come from the Dutch. Huh? Would anyone like to uh, bet that that was a Dutch idea? <laughs> Hi, Evie. Oh, look, we finally have a flame tree in flower. I've been talking about flame trees on my last few tours. And here we have one, the best flowering one I've seen so far. Any Jimmy, any Jimmy Barnes fans here, Cold Chisel fans on the tour? He's got a song about the flame trees. Isn't it beautiful? I'm going to try and get up really close to the flowers. See, this one I do know the name of. This is a flame tree. <laughs> All right, now let's see if we can get it in focus. Uh, let me see. Is it going to be better for me to zoom in? I'm going to look up. Here we go. Look, let's, let's look at this. Uh, back I lean. Lean back. There we go. Absolutely gorgeous. Illawarra flame tree. This is called... And uh, they are just, you can imagine when, when the flowers are all out, because there's a lot of buds still there, you can imagine when they're all out, just what this looks like. And that's the seed pod. Here we go. Illawarra flame tree. So this more modern building, although by our standards still, still an older one, is the School of Chemistry. I look at the flame tree from this angle. Sorry, I'm getting distracted, aren't I? Squirrel, shiny object, there it is. Look at that. Oh, sorry, try not to get the kids in. All right. And here we have one of the more modern buildings. I know nothing about this building or the artwork on the side of it. Um, but here, let's have a look. They look to me like eels. How long does it stay red? Debbie, really good question, and I don't know the answer to that, but I think it probably lasts over the summer. Marine science is probably a really good guess. You know? Let's have a look and see what it says. Uh, 
does cannot see any information at all on what this building is. But there's another interesting, uh, what would you call that? Is it an etching? Perhaps it's an etching. And with more eels and like a watercourse. Okay, so it says the echoing knowledge from confrontation. My artwork is based on the constant and infinite loop of knowledge of old laws of First Nation peoples, elders sharing knowledge down to young people and those becoming knowledge holders themselves in the future. I won't read all of that, but the artist is Michael Jalaru Torres and he's from Broome, uh, which is about as far as you can get from Sydney and still be in Australia. Now, I'm pretty sure this is the Fisher Library. It's the, uh, the huge library that's the central uh, library resource for the university. Of course, all the faculties would have uh, smaller libraries, I think, within them as well. But uh, that's the main Fisher Library. And that brings us to the Anderson Stewart Building, which is the School of Medicine. Flame tree, Illawarra flame tree, lace bark tree. Thanks, Ava. Okay, so this is the stunning um, Anderson Stewart building, and it was named for the first uh, principal, I think his title was, um, who was brought out from the UK. And I've, my brain's gone blank. I'm pretty sure he was brought out from Scotland, from the University of Edinburgh, but I could be totally wrong on that one. The first year that they held a medical school, a dedicated medical school, they only had four students. Now it's one of the most prestigious medical schools in the world. And let's see if we can go inside and have a look. But first of all, let's have a look at some of just the beautiful detail. Chancellor, thanks, Yuna. Absolutely gorgeous building. And up the top there, we've got the statue up on the roof. We've got those, those little sort of finials or whatever they're called up there. As I said, I'm no student of architecture. I just appreciate beauty when I see it. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Melinda. And uh, Muhammad. Hi, Muhammad. Hoping we can do the same again because it's just lovely. So let's see how we go. It's windy, it is. All right, so School of Medicine, and this is the inside of the entryway. And that's repeated all the way around the arch at the entry doorway. So I'm giving you awkward angles here. Sorry about that. Okay, let's see. First of all, if we can get upstairs and have a look at that stained glass window above the front door. We'll do that first. Um, and I think that's... Which way? Is it this way? I think it's this way. All right, so we'll go up here first. And I'm keeping an eye on the signal. I realise that these old buildings are very soundly built. And I have a chance of losing my signal inside them, but we'll be careful. Keep an eye on it. Whew. Okay, what have we got? Ah, yes. Here we go. Yes, any indeed. Imagine how many feet have been along these halls. Let's get up close and see if we can see any detail. Um, but you might want a postcard of that just as it is. There we go. So presumably they're all doctors, these guys. So this one says, 
James, I can't read his surname, is it Syme? 1799 to 1870, for example. And they all have, they all have their name and the dates. So, I'm terrible with this writing. Sir B. Brody, is it? Possibly B. E. Brody. This must be his field of knowledge, perhaps. Yeah, so lovely window. And uh, we won't go in this room here, okay? All right, we'll stay out of this one. Not sure what happens in there. Okay, just have a little quick look along this corridor. There's another um, stained glass window at the other end. Let's see if we can see if that's the same or different maybe. beautiful staircase heading upstairs. We'll, we won't go any further up inside the building, but I just wanted to have a look at this window. Oh, there's two of them. Beautiful glass, stained glass everywhere. There's one down there. I might go up to the first level on this stairway, the first landing, and we'll have a look at this window up here. Uh, no, they're, they're all busts of different people, Rose, but I wasn't dwelling on them too much. We might have a close look at one or two of them on the way back down. There we go. Okay. And just in close on that. Okay, let's go back down here. Let's have a look. Here's one of the, um, they're all busts of different people. And I don't know who they are or their relevance to the school, but obviously they would have some sort of relevance. Uh, so this one says John Goodsir. I know nothing about it, Una. These are all things I'm still trying to find out. So I envisage that each time I come here, I'll come with a little more knowledge than the previous time. There are actually people doing things in there. Look. So here we have, for example, Alexander Munro. I'm not sure who he is either. Thanks, Andrea. So obviously they're all, all related to medicine somehow, but um, I know nothing about any of them. Okay, let's go out and see this courtyard because the courtyard is absolutely beautiful. Just got to remember how to get there. No, it wasn't that way. I think it was up here. Uh, that's the staircase. Oh, hang on a second. I'm still one floor up, aren't I? <laughs> okay. It would be a good idea if I went down a level to find the courtyard. You can visualise me slapping my forehead. <laughs> so many corridors. Yes, indeed. So here's one of the... Uh, one of the associate professor's offices, just in this little, little office on the stairwell. I like to think that academics don't have pretensions or airs. Is that true?
right, this is the way out here. Aren't they just? Andrea? Okay, this is where we're going. Look, look out here. Out through this window. Look at that. Look at that staircase. I am indeed, Marianne. <laughs> I'm definitely getting a good work workout. Look at this courtyard, though. Isn't this gorgeous? And we haven't even gotten to the highlight of the the, the, the main quadrangle building yet. That's even better than this. Okay, we're going to look up to see what tree that is, Andrea. Let's go. Okay, up we go, up we go, up we go. Now, does this feel like something out of uh, a Moroccan scene or something? Look at this, with the palm trees and the, the sandstone. Look at that. And back again. Oh, wait on. Let me just go left quickly first. Yeah, Shannon, absolutely. I can see that too. Okay, so I'm going to have a look, see if we can see along this corridor here. This is all stained glass. I wonder if I can get inside there. I don't know. That's, that's a project for next time, I think. Okay, so the Donna Anderson Stewart Court. It says the refurbishment of this court was made possible by a bequest from the late Donna Anderson Stewart, granddaughter of Sir Thomas Anderson Stewart, founder of the medical school. And look at this staircase. I'm sorry, we have to we have to uh, we have to go vertical on this one. It's just gorgeous. Look at it. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And back again. I'm going to see if we can look inside and up through the middle of the staircase. Now, there's a statue of a raven over here. Um, what's the connection between ravens and medicine? I know there's something. Let's see if we can find out. Here we go. Here's the raven. And he's, this is obviously a water feature that's just not operating at the moment. put him against a plain background. Uh, I think that first column might have been better. Let's see. Slightly lighter. Now there's a plaque over here. What does it say? Oh, here. No, there's one right on my right shoulder. The legend of the raven. The, this raven cast for the fountain in 2003 matches the raven figure which has stood high over the eastern entrance to the building since its completion in 1889. I didn't see that. Above the older raven at the apex of the gable are carved the initials AS, which obviously stands for um, Anderson Stewart. Intertwined the initials of those of Thomas Anderson Stewart. Here we go. I'm not going to read that whole thing for you. Um, but if you want, you can take a postcard of that. And then there's another plaque over here. Uh, this plaque commemorates the generosity of the many, many people who have donated their remains to the university. Okay, let's have a look at this stairwell. Thanks for the follow, Debbie. And for anyone who's new uh, to my tours, um, if you want to see more, hit that follow button and you'll get notifications anytime I... Uh, Any time I make it, <laughs> it's awkward talking when I'm doing this. Edgar Allan Poe, yes, now was that raven that we looked at, is that related? Is that related to the Edgar Allan Poe story or do we just make that assumption when we see ravens? I'm not sure. Um, if there's a connection, that's great. It's even makes it even more interesting, doesn't it? All right. 
Okay, I think we've spent enough time in here. What do you think? Should we continue on to the quadrangle? Sorry, I'm going to go just a little further. Just love the detail. Now, obviously, this was built at a time when there was less of a, a concern for fair pay for work, <laughs> I'm guessing. And that's why you don't see buildings like this anymore. Or maybe I'm guessing. <laughs> All right, what's around this side? Just quickly before we leave. Oh, I found a secret door. We can go that way. We can go out a different way to the quadrangle. Okay. I think our goal should be on future tours to try and get up there. What do you think? I wonder how hard it is to get up there. I wonder if it's even possible. All right, let's go. Let's go out to the quad. Okay, how's this for an entrance? And then you've got the timber. Uh, lining the tunnel here. I could just see my signal drop, so we're not going to spend any time here at all. But we will look back into it from this side. Here we go. So, Faculty of Medicine. It's beautiful, isn't it, Rose? But this is, that was the prestige that was attached to uh, learning and should still be, if you think about it, really. Although I'd, I'd rather see more funds being put into uh, the resources for the education rather than the actual buildings. But uh, this is certainly, certainly an architecture to celebrate. All right, so let's get into a position where I can get these two buildings together side by side. I go over here. Oops, car coming. Both your children graduated as teachers. Excellent, Anna. My um, sister-in-law did as well. Okay, so here's the Faculty of Medicine and on the right over here we have, we're just starting to see, come into view, the beautiful quadrangle building. And we'll get into a position where we can see both of these buildings somehow. Oh, what did you find in Google? Hang on. Shannon's found something. Hold on a second. If you have a connection to Raven, meaning this bird has chosen you to share their medicine, take this sacred blood bond seriously. You'll have a powerful impact on others. Interesting. Don't get knocked down, <laughs> even if you're outside a faculty of medicine. Yeah, well, they're still on holidays, though, I think, Gregory, so it's not going to do me an awful lot of good. All right, so here we go with the beautiful Anderson Stewart building on our left. Look at the tower on the top of it. Isn't that gorgeous? Like the little weather vane up the top there as well. And then over here on my right is the quadrangle building. And I need to get back. I need to go back to have any hope of getting this building in view. I don't have a lot of facts and figures for you for the quadrangle. 
Um, I was doing so much reading <laughs> coming here today and I think I've overloaded. <laughs> I seem to have forgotten everything that I tried to read. So we're going to go inside and have a look around, but I'm, I, I don't have lots of facts and figures for you. Sorry about that. It's beautiful. Let me reassure you that it is absolutely beautiful and definitely worth a visit. And, <clears throat> and you're going to love it. And if you, even if you don't know anything more about it, after you leave it than before we go in. No, I'm kidding. We'll, we'll try and find something knowledgeable to share with you. <laughs> so you can see why the confusion, can't you? Doesn't it look like the, uh, was it the Dur Dur Durham, Durham Castle? Was it Durham Castle that was used in uh, Harry Potter films um, as the... Uh, as the location for Hogwarts and this certainly does have some similarities but when we get inside you'll see you can even visualize the uh, the Quidditch or the broom the broom riding lessons Madam Hooch and the first year students in the main quadrangle Oh wow, Ava, that's really cool. That's that's uh, really interesting. It is very English. I think it was deliberately designed that way, um, taking from the great schools of Oxford and Cambridge. So over there on the left, the School of Medicine, the Anderson Stewart Building. Then in here we have uh, we have the Great Hall, for instance. Um, which is this one over here on the right. We may be able to get in and have a look at that. Um, we're certainly going to try to. And then in here as well, I haven't figured out exactly where it is yet, but there is a Carillion as well. And uh, one of three Carillions in Australia. One's located in Canberra on Lake Burley Griffin. One's located in Bathurst. And there's one here at Sydney University. I think I'm going to have to try and come here. I think it's uh, midday on a Tuesday, I think, is when the uh, Carillion actually gets played. So here we go. Here's the quadrangle. I can't hear bagpipes, Trisha. I think I can hear the ubiquitous leaf blower. <laughs> All right, so here we are. Here's the quadrangle. Let's have a look at the building again from the outside and have a look around us before we go in. And over on that side there, that's West Point Tower. We see that on several of my tours as we're moving around the city. And over in the background here, this is deliberate. Okay, so this is the University of Technology, Sydney, with a, in a very brutalist style building. So you can see the juxtaposition of the University of Technology against the University of Sydney, which is very traditional. And apparently they built that deliberately in this location that you can see it from this entrance into the quadrangle. So even as I move backwards into the quadrangle, um, you're seeing the, the, comp the competition, the more modern, if you like, UTS building. The Sydney Opera House, Tricia, is... All right, so if you see where the West, West Point Tower is, that Sydney Tower over there used to be called Sydney Tower. Um, and if you move, so that from where we're standing is roughly northeast. If you head about, oh, gosh, it's a 10-minute walk in a northerly direction from West Point Tower, you'll hit the Opera House. Okay, and here we are. Look at this. Okay, I'm looking around. Where's Madam Hooch? 
Where's the broomstick lesson? Isn't this exactly as you pictured it, as you saw it in the first Harry Potter film? We're just going to take a, a quick pan around to get the general layout of the quadrangle and then I'll walk through the archways. Look at this though, if I stand here, look at looking out that way, through there, and you can still see that UTS building from just there. There it is. Don't step on the grass, it's all roped off. Okay, let's do a vertical shot here. Look at that. Gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. And back again. Now over in that corner there you can see that small tree. That's a replacement jacaranda. There was a grand old beautiful jacaranda tree in that corner. And it died and they've replaced it. So that's, that's the new replacement jacaranda tree. Let's go along the, um, let's go along the archway. Actually, I might go to the, I might go to the Great Hall first, see if we can get in there first and then we'll come back the other side. It was really sad, wasn't it? Because a stunning old tree. If you Google pictures of the jacaranda tree at Sydney University, oh, there's some absolute stunners. Now, I think that's the Carillion, um, but I might be wrong. Is that the Carillion? What does a Carillion look like? <laughs> I think that's the Carillion. But you, I guess you'd know if you were standing here and it started uh, ringing. Over there, there's a clock tower on top of, uh, that's a, I think that's a chapel. Um, we're going to try and get inside there as well. I've really taken my time today, haven't I? It's almost an hour. That's okay. We're all flexible, aren't we? With something like this, you don't, it's not, it doesn't do it any justice to rush it. Okay, let's see if the Grand Hall is open. Fingers crossed, everybody. Oh, is that even the right way to get in there? Hang on. I'm getting all lost. Maybe it was this way. Oh, come on, help me out here. Let me let me find my way. Ah, uh, it's this one. Yeah, it's closed. Can't get in there today. Thank you, Debbie. All right, so we will try and get into that building on the opposite corner over there. That's where we're headed now. We'll see if that's open. Let's go over there. A few more minutes left, guys. I'll just take you over to that building and then we'll finish up. But look, without um, without pointing out actually what this doorway is for, I think I accidentally did on the other one. You can see the ornate carvings above the door. Thanks, Debbie. Thanks, Beth. Really appreciate it. Okay, so we'll just go through here along the corridor under the arches. Thanks, Rhonda. Let's see if we can get some interesting angles through these archways as well. I'll go a little slower. I won't stop deliberately, but I'll go a little slower to allow you to do it. Actually, I'll give you one tiny little quick detour before we go over there. Um, is this corner staircase? Um, is this it? Yeah. Here we go. Let's have a look up here. Uh, 
I notice the signal's just dropped down again, so we'll keep moving. Here's Marianne at summertime. Summertime in Australia. We're right in the middle of summer. Got some gorgeous stained glass windows here too. But when we're not going to slow down, we're going to keep moving. Look at this. No, we haven't. We haven't had much of a summer at all. So this week we had one day of summer. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. Feels very church like, doesn't it? All right, and uh, let's just see if we can get into that other building up the stairs into the corner building. You're having a mild winter where you are, Marianne. beautiful door. If we go up here, fingers crossed everybody that it's open. I'll just put my battery pack in that pocket there. So up here we can see that's the School of Humanities. Oh no, it's closed. If we can see in through the windows at all, let's have a look. We might be able to get a glimpse at least. Let's see what, what we can see. Can we see anything? Last time I was here, this was all open. Uh, what a shame that it's closed. All right. We can see out through here maybe. Out of focus. Sorry, Rhonda. Yeah, it's, there's too much competing, too much uh, competing uh, um, subject matter. All right, I'm not going to waste any more time here. I'll head back downstairs and then we'll finish up. Sorry, guys. I was hoping, really hoping we could have taken you inside, uh, inside this hall here. Never mind. Next time, let's have a look at the ceiling, the wooden ceiling, though. This is really cool. Look up here. All right, so let's get back downstairs, down to the arches and uh, the covered archway, and we'll finish up down here. Thanks, Rhonda. Thanks, Paula. Thanks for the follow. Um, and if you're not already following me, hit that follow button and you'll get notifications when I post new tools or if I need to make changes. All right, so let's come over here. I'm guessing that there's going to be some first-time students here, lots of photos happening in the middle of the quadrangle. This goes down to other areas of the university. Thanks, Rose. Thanks, B. Here we go. Do you want a shot of this? It is a beautiful campus, Stephanie. It's lovely. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for joining me, and uh, I'll see you on another tour. Um, share your postcards, tell your friends.
Uh, the only way that we can keep Hago going is by uh, building the community and growing it. So uh, it's really important to get that message out as much as you can. All right, everyone. And for everyone who was able to tip, I'm very grateful. That helps me keep going and bringing you new content as well. All right. And I don't have it. I don't have it. Even have a tip prompt. Beth, Beth, are you experiencing this? I'm not having a tip prompt, but prompt button anymore. I don't know what's happened to that. <laughs> so here I am asking you, or prompting you, if you're able. And um, I appreciate all of you, whether you can or or whether you're um, unable to, just right now. Thanks, everybody. I look forward to seeing you again soon. One last, one last look around. And back at that ivy entrance. Bye, everybody.